Hello and welcome to the JSA studio. I'm your host as always Nathan and today we are going to be breaking down the Michigan coaching staff. We're going to go position by position talking about the coaches that coach those positions and what I think about them with a notable exception and that being head coach Sharon Moore who we will talk about on Friday in his own separate video. And now with the intro done and out of the way, there's only one thing left to say. That's to ask you to like, comment, and subscribe. We are starting off this video with offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach Kurt Campbell, who made the jump from just quarterback coach this past year to now getting it to operate the whole offense. He did call plays for the ECU game this past season, and the offense, in all honesty, looked a lot different in that game than it did in pretty much every other game when Sharon Moore was calling the plays. There was a lot more outbreaking routes offensively in terms of in the passing game, and also we threw the ball a lot more in terms of like a per rep situation in that game than we did in pretty much every other game. Campbell also had previous play calling experience, most notably at Old Dominion in 2020 and 2021 when he was the offensive coordinator slash quarterbacks coach, the same role that he now possesses for Michigan. Before getting that position, he was an offensive analyst for Penn State. And after Old Dominion, he came to Michigan as a offensive analyst in 2022 before being promoted to a quarterback coach in 2023 last year. And now he is offensive coordinator, play caller, and quarterback coach. The general vibe I got from the coaching community, at least what I could look into, is that Kurt Campbell might be that guy. He is generally very, very, very well respected when it comes to actually coaching the quarterback position, both in terms of his ability to coach the technique for the position, stuff like footwork and arm angles, but also being able to schematically understand the quarterback position and what is being asked of the quarterback at any period of time. And on top of that, also showcasing an ability to teach the position, which is not necessarily rare, but generally speaking, if you are going to be a coach at this high of a level, which coaching in the Power Five is probably the second highest level of coaching behind the NFL, typically you're going to be good at coaching. However, they usually fall into one of two camps in the NFL with a bonus third camp for college. And those camps are you are either a scheme coach, in which case you understand the X's and O's of the game, or you're a what I call teacher coach, where you're all about teaching the game to the quarterback position or to any position where it's more about technique and developing as well as getting players to understand what is being asked of them. Generally speaking, the guys that are more scheme oriented tend to develop into play callers and the guys that are more personality focused or teaching focused usually end up being the developmental coaches that are really, really good at being position coaches. In college, there's a third bonus a sort of way that you can become a high-level coach, and that's through recruiting, and that's pretty self-explanatory. If you're a really, really good recruiter, the coaching becomes kind of secondary as opposed to the recruiting, in which case you're hired to be a position coach largely because you can recruit rather than your ability to coach. That doesn't particularly exist in the NFL because they don't really recruit players. However, it takes a rare coach to be good at both uh, the scheme side and the technical slash teaching side of the game. And Kurt Campbell appears to perhaps be one of those guys that's good at both of those things. I will also say I don't think he's a bad recruiter by any stretch of the imagination. This Brady Hart kid that's committed in 2026 uh, looks like a guy that has a ton of upside. Now we'll see if his recruiting commitment will end up sticking and all of that. And generally, I don't like talking about recruiting a whole lot, 
but it is relevant to the conversation that we were having surrounding the coaching staff. All in all, Kurt Campbell calling plays was something I was anticipating before this past season because I figured Sharon Moore was going to leave and be a head coach somewhere else. And I didn't know Jim Harbaugh was going to leave or not. It became very obvious throughout the course of the season that Jim Harbaugh was going to leave. However, before that point, I was still thinking that Kirk Campbell was likely going to get promoted to offensive coordinator and be the head play caller heading into this current season as we see in like 40 days or so. I don't remember exactly when. But when Jim Harbaugh left, I was kind of scared that Jerome Moore was going to try to be head coach and play caller, which generally is not the way to go in college. But that concern has been alleviated because Kurt Campbell is going to be the one calling the plays. And I believe that he will do a very, very good job. Now, how long he stays at Michigan is maybe not necessarily a concern, but is somewhat concerning because this is a guy that I believe will get head coaching interviews after this year. And maybe he'll leave. Maybe he won't. I don't know. But this is someone that I really could not see being on this roster of coaches past the 2025-26 season. I I believe he's going to get a head coaching job at some point. Anyway, I went on a couple of tangents with Kurt Campbell there. But Tony Alford is the running back coach. He was not necessarily in line to be the running back coach. I think a lot of people expected Mike Hart to potentially come back, especially when Jim Harbaugh hired a running backs coach for the Chargers. However, it appears that Mike Hart is going to be taking at least a year off of coaching, uh, largely, I, I think, due to the health concerns and stuff like that. And it's no real fault of Tony Alford, who appears to be a solid coach from a technical standpoint, but also a really, really good recruiter. That appears to be his main position uh, on the team is probably a recruiter. Uh, However, this is probably the biggest downgrade that we had from coaching staff standpoint this season to the previous season. Because going from Mike Hart, who I think was unquestionably the best running back coach in the country, to a guy who I think is good, as opposed to being the best running back coach in the country. And that's not Tony Alford's fault. Like, I don't think that Jerome Moore could have made a better hire, especially considering that he came from Ohio State. And typically, if you're at a place like Ohio State and you're getting interviewed for other jobs and it's the same position, they'll probably just match the pay raise that you were going to get by going to the other school and maybe give you a bump to like run game coordinator, that which doesn't mean anything. It means nothing. He's like, it doesn't mean anything, but it's a promotion entitled to justify the raise that they want to give you. So usually that's what happens. Uh, but Tony Alford maybe just wanted to leave Ohio State. That's, I guess, a possibility. But Michigan just threw money at him, and then he came to Michigan. And he's a good coach, but I do believe that this is a downgrade from a coaching standpoint going from Mike Hart to him. Moving on to the wide receivers coach. Ron Bellamy is his name, and he is probably our best recruiter. Generally speaking, regardless of position, if you're a big-time target for Michigan, he will likely be the one listed as the lead recruiter. Now, I do say maybe because we do have a coach in the secondary who is very, very good at recruiting as well. However, I actually believe he is a quality wide receivers coach as well. If you look at the Michigan wide receivers, they're very technically sound. They understand how to work in zone against zone coverages, and they're very good technically when trying to break against man coverages. So I believe that he's actually a really good technicals coach from that standpoint in terms of coaching technique, but he's also very valuable as a recruiter. In terms of his background, he bounced around several teams Uh, from Miami, where he started, to Baltimore, and then spending a little bit of time in Detroit before his NFL career kind of 
teetered out. So, you know, he got four or five years in there. Uh, and he ended up becoming the head coach for West Bloomfield High School in Michigan. He was in that position for a decade before winning a state championship and coming to Michigan with big time recruit Donovan Edwards. Also worth noting that Makari Page and Samaj Morgan were both there while Ron Bellamy was running the program. Now, Samaj Morgan, I believe, was a freshman in 2020, the year that Ron Bellamy left. However, you could make the argument that there was a bit of kinship there, and perhaps that pushed Samaj Morgan to come to Michigan over other schools because of that reason. Now, it is not an uncommon occurrence to see college football teams hire the head coach of a high school team to a position role because they want to gain a little bit more influence over a big-time recruit at that high school. That happens every now and then. So when Ron Bellamy was hired to Michigan and then Donovan Edwards committed to Michigan, that's kind of what I figured this was going to be. To give you a more clear example of that, Tyrone Wheatley became Michigan's running back coach so that Tyrone Wheatley Jr. would commit to Michigan. That's what happened there. And I kind of thought that Ron Bellamy and Donovan Edwards were maybe a package deal like that, and that Ron Bellamy, much like Tyrone Wheatley, would probably be gone after a year or two. Turns out Ron Bellamy is just a really, really good coach, so my initial reaction to him being hired as the wide receiver coach was incorrect. And... He is also, maybe, potentially, our best recruiter. So he is a piece that I am very glad did not follow Jim Harbaugh into the NFL. Steve Kasula is the next coach up. He is the tight end coach, taking over that position for Grant Newsom, who shifted to the offensive line position, which we'll talk about next. To give you his background a little bit, he got his GA or graduate assistant for Western Michigan in 2010 to 2011. He then became the tight end slash fullback coach for West Virginia in 2012. Moved on to Colgate for a year before becoming the offensive coordinator at Davenport University for three seasons, 2014, 15, and 16. Then moved on to Ferris State for two years before joining Michigan's coaching staff for the first time as an analyst for three seasons in 2019, 2020, and 2021. He then left with Don Brown, I think, or actually it was a year after Don Brown, but reunited with Don Brown in 2022 to be the UMass's offensive coordinator slash quarterback coach. And then this past year, he returned to Michigan. His role to me seems more like a scheme guy and we kind of had to put him at tight end to get him on the coaching staff it kind of feels like he's going to bounce around to potentially wherever he needs to be to be on this coaching staff he might be an analyst he might move to quarterbacks if kurt campbell gets a head coaching job somewhere uh, actually i believe that's the most likely thing to occur there he could move to being just the offensive coordinator or a wide receiver coach. It could be kind of whatever he needs to be in order to keep him around the coaching staff. That's sort of the vibe that I get with him. However, he hasn't really been a coach at a big time place before. So he is a bit of an unknown, especially when it comes to something like recruiting or actually coaching the tight end position, which even though he did work as a tight end coach for Western Michigan and Colgate, he really kind of cut his teeth as being the quarterback's coach and an offensive coordinator. So he is a little bit of an unknown, uh, not necessarily for the position because, again, he's coached there before, but in terms of what he's going to do on the roster as well as how good of a coach he is going to be. Grant Newsom is the offensive line coach coach and his career path is pretty simple he committed to michigan to play offensive line he then was somewhat forced to medically retire he then worked as a student assistant for two years and then a ga for two years and then the tight end coach for two years and now he's moved to the offensive line 
position. And this was another thing that, if you're paying attention, you kind of saw coming because Jim Harbaugh entering into this past year had talked about how Sharon Moore is likely going to leave to be a head coach after this year. And if that happens, then he's likely going to slide Grant Newsom over to the offensive line position. And the general consensus was also that he was going to make Kurt Campbell the offensive coordinator and play caller. And I believe that Grant Newsom is a really, really good coach. I don't have any hardcore evidence to suggest that other than he is the youngest position coach, I believe, at the Division I football level. And generally speaking, you got to be a really, really good coach to pull off something like that. And it's also worth noting that he was Michigan's tight end coach the past two seasons, where Colston Loveland has developed into a first-round caliber sort of tight end. So, there is perhaps some evidence to suggest that he's a really, really good football coach, just in general as well. All in all, I really, 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 really like Grant Newsom as the offensive line coach. I don't particularly see a scenario where the quality of the offensive line coach falls off. Moving on now to the defensive side of the football, we have Wink Martindale as the defensive coordinator, the godfather of this Baltimore Ravens style defense that everybody is clamoring for right now at both the NFL level and the college level. Martindale got his coaching start as a defensive coordinator for Defiance College before uh, moving on to be an assistant coach for Notre Dame, as well as then moving on to, in 1996, Cincinnati, where he was the special teams coordinator and linebackers coach. He then got promotion to Western Illinois, where he became the defensive coordinator and linebackers coach before moving on to Western Kentucky, where he would work with Jack Harbaugh for three years and then a fourth year where Jack Harbaugh wasn't there winning a national championship in the 2002 at the FCS level uh, before getting his NFL career started as linebackers coach for Oakland Raiders and then moving on to Denver before becoming Denver's defensive coordinator in 2010 and then moving on to Baltimore to be their linebacker coach for six seasons before becoming their defensive coordinator for four seasons, then moving on to the Giants, where he was this defensive coordinator this past season. And it's worth noting that since he became Baltimore's defensive coordinator, he's done a honestly phenomenal job at being a defensive coordinator outside of this past year with the Giants, where everything went wrong and it wasn't just him. I think that Wink Martindale here is going to be able to keep this defense playing at an extraordinarily high level. I don't think there are a lot of people that are going to find controversy in that statement. I also believe that just from listening to him to his introductory press conference and also seeing him on Twitter and just kind of hearing things through coaching circles, he also appears to be having the time of his life coaching back in college. He genuinely seems happy to be here. I don't know if he's a long-term solution at the defensive coordinator position. He absolutely could be if the pay is right and he doesn't particularly want to go back to the NFL, if he likes being in college, stuff like that. However, as we'll talk about when we get to the other positions here on the defensive side of the ball, there are coaches on staff that I think could develop into being a high-level defensive coordinator for this team. Next coach on the docket here is Lou Esposito. No relation to John Carlo, as far as I'm aware. And he is the defensive line coach. And he kind of bounced around a whole bunch of different places in order to end up here at Michigan. As a player, he played for Memphis before moving on to the Arena Football League, where he played for the Memphis Explorers as an offensive lineman. He then moved on to Division II St. Joseph's in Indiana as a defensive coordinator, and then later head coach before moving to Western Michigan to be the 
defensive line coach for three seasons and then became the defensive coordinator at Ferris State before moving on to be the head coach at Davenport before returning to Western Michigan as the defensive coordinator slash defensive line coach for seven seasons. And then now this past year, he's made the leap to Michigan. I think he's a pretty good coach. That being said, I don't particularly believe there was a better hire to be made given the circumstances around which Lou Esposito was hired. Uh, in case you don't know or don't remember, we hired a different coach to coach the defensive line. It was announced. And then the day after it was announced, he got arrested for driving drunk. And off the field considerations notwithstanding, I was actually quite excited for the hire of Greg Scruggs. But uh, off the field considerations now being considered, yeah, he had to go especially given that we also had to let Denard Robertson go for also driving drunk. And you didn't particularly want to have people joking about that being the culture around the coaching staff. So we're here with Lou Esposito, and I think he's a good coach. I think in recent years he's put some kids into the draftable conversation for Western Michigan this past year, that was uh, Marshawn Keeland, who actually had a top 75 grade on as a defensive lineman. I liked him quite a bit. I think he's a solid coach. I don't know if he's the long-term answer at the defensive line position. He might be a mutual parting of ways after this season because Sharon Moore kind of just had to go out and get somebody because he was already hiring people really late into the off-season process. And then they had to fire Greg Scruggs after a day. So they had to find another guy very, very rapidly. And Luis Pasito, given the context around which he was hired, I think was a really, really good hire. So I'm not mad that he's here, but I'm not sure he's a long-term coach on this coaching staff. Up next, we have Brian Jean Mary at the linebacker position. And this is a guy that's coached everywhere. He's had stints at Appalachia State, at North Alabama, Louisville, Texas, UCF, where he was the defensive coordinator, and then Tennessee most recently, as well as Georgia Tech, which I accidentally skipped over on my list of notes that I have here to the, my left. He is known mostly for being a quality recruiter. However, I also think that there's quite a bit of evidence to suggest that he's a very, very good linebacker coach as well. Uh, this is someone that I believe is a positive influence on this coaching staff in terms of not only from a recruiting perspective, but also from an X's and O perspective. This is someone that's been around the block. He's coached in a lot of different schemes, and he kind of just knows what linebackers are supposed to do. He was also at Michigan as the linebackers coach in 2020. So I don't know if that's a bad omen or not, but it's worth noting that he was here for a year as well. He is also someone that could be looked at as a potential defensive coordinator replacement should Wink Martindale prefer to go back to the NFL after this season or maybe after the following season. I don't know. But he has defensive coordinator experience, and it is honestly kind of hard to tell how good you are as a coach if you're at USF, especially if you're not the head coach. But I think he was all right as a defensive coordinator at USF. So I think he is a candidate. I would not say he is the leading candidate, though, because Lamar Morgan is on this coaching staff. Lamar Morgan cut his teeth as a graduate assistant first for Vanderbilt before moving on to being the defensive backs coach for Western Carolina and then going to Louisiana Monroe to be the defensive backs coach for two years, then moving on to Houston where he was the safeties coach, then going to his first stint at Louisiana where he was the cornerbacks coach for two years. He then went to Vanderbilt in 2021 for one year where he was the cornerbacks coach. Also worth noting, the defensive coordinator slash safeties coach 
for Vanderbilt in 2021 was Jesse Minter. So there was perhaps maybe a little connection there where he was like, hey, Sharon, you should hire my buddy from Vanderbilt. But after Vanderbilt, he became the defensive coordinator for Louisiana the past two seasons, where given the fact that it was Louisiana, I think he actually did a pretty good job, especially because Louisiana was an offensive team and they put up 30 points per game as well as like almost 500 yards, if I remember correctly. So it was a really good offense. The defense was put in a very, very bad position, but I think he did a really good job as the defensive coordinator. And should Wink Martindale move on back to the NFL or anywhere else or retire, then I think Lamar Morgan would probably be the guy that you look at to be the next defensive coordinator especially given that he does have experience in the scheme, even if it was only one year with Jesse Minter at Vanderbilt. It's also worth noting that I believe Lamar Morgan is probably our best recruiter. It's either him or Ron Bellamy. However, in the very, very specific and short period of time that Lamar Morgan has been here, he's gotten some big-time recruits to Michigan or at least to commit to Michigan. We'll see if they actually stick around. Moving on here to the last segment in this video, other staff members that I'm not particularly interested in breaking down. J.D. Brown is the special teams coordinator. Fernell McPhee is a analyst, but with the new rules in college football surrounding analysts and how they are much less restricted in terms of contact with players, they are actually allowed to coach now. I imagine that Fernell McPhee will act more like an assistant defensive line coach than an actual analyst. Justin Truss is the strength and conditioning coordinator. Last year under Ben Herbert, he was the assistant strength and conditioning coach. So I don't particularly envision a whole lot of drop off in that area. And Sean McGee is the general manager for the team. And when it comes to what general managers do, there's no real defined role. A lot of the times they're working as like a liaison between the athletic director and the football team. A lot of the times they're there with organization and stuff like that. So the general manager position is kind of whatever it needs to be, sort of like a glue guy in baseball. And because of that, I don't particularly know what Sean McGee is actually going to do, but I imagine that he's probably going to be very important. But that's just me, and what do I know? I'm just some asshole on the internet giving you his opinion. And it's at this point in the video, I'd like to remind you to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and if you disagree with me at any point, or you just have something to say, go ahead and drop a comment down below in the comment section. And now with the outro done and out of the way, there's only one thing left to say, and that's that I'll see you next time.